do you agree? You've been warning that maybe the Fed could move too slowly on inflation and have to speed up too much. Is Powell on the verge of a policy error? Well, we'll see how things evolve. I mean, obviously, if the inflation pressures to do turn out to be transitory, then the Federal Reserve has more time. If there actually is more slack in the labor market than suggested by the level of unfilled jobs, then we'll be fine. We just don't know the answer to those questions at, at this point. I think this, the important thing here is that the Federal Reserve is making it a choice to really strive to find the maximum level of employment uh, consistent with their inflation objective. And by doing that, uh, there is a risk that they're going to be late. Well, Bill, you know, you were the chief economist at Goldman Sachs. You worked with a lot of the guys on the bond desk every day explaining the latest numbers. Then you ran the open markets desk at the New York Fed. Very important position. Buying and selling securities are overseeing that before you can became the Fed bank president. How would the markets take it? How would the bond market take it if suddenly Jay Powell has to say, well, you know, we're going to speed up the taper so we can get to that rate hike faster. Would that cause the kind of disruption they've been trying to avoid? Oh, absolutely. I mean, I think that's one reason why the taper is pretty much locked in stone here. I would be very surprised if they sped it up or if they slowed it down. Uh, they made it very clear today in their communications. Not only did they announce that what they're going to do for November, they also announced what they're going to do for December. Uh, and they made it clear that while they could vary the pace if economic conditions change, that really wasn't very, isn't very likely. So I think we're on a path where the Fed has basically eight months uh, to assess uh, the inflation outlook, to assess, assess the state of the labor market. And depending on how that plays out, um, they'll either be able to sit on their hands some more in terms of raising short-term rates or they'll, or they'll have to move in the second half of 2022. Well, as an economist, what is the likelihood that they'll be able to sit tight that long and that inflation will prove to be transitory and this just goes as smoothly as they're hoping? Well, that's certainly their view, although they, in the statement today, they, they softened their views a little bit. Before they said it was transitory factors, now they deem it as factors that are expected to be transitory. So there's a little, slightly less confidence in the, how transitory these factors are. The key thing, though, at the end of the day, is not whether the, the inflation pressures are transitory or not, but d does it get into wages and does it get into inflation expectations? And the most recent data we've gotten on both those things are a little bit concerning. Wages have accelerated more than what's consistent, I think, with 2% inflation. And inflation expectations, by some measures, are starting, starting to show some upward pressure. But we'll, we'll see how this plays out. I mean, the good thing for the Fed, from the Federal Reserve's perspective, is they have eight months uh, to, to make a well-considered choice in terms of what's next. In the meantime, these supply side issues continue unabated. How difficult is it modeling a policy response when this was quite unexpected and there's a lot of concern that this may be sort of deeper structural issues as opposed to just coming out of the pandemic? Well, I think the Federal Reserve view is, is that these are uh, pressures that are going to turn out to be temporary, even if temporary turns out to last a lot longer than what they had previously had thought. <laughs> Obviously, what, what the pandemic did was a number of things. Number one, it, it shifted the demand away from services to goods, so you had a big increase in, in goods uh, uh, activity during the pandemic. Uh, you, you discourage people from working because of fears of getting sick, uh, and then you have a big reopening of the economy as the the, the, the incidence of, of, of uh, COVID uh, diminished and the severity of when people got sick diminished as well. So this is a pretty big, you know, adjustment that the economy is going through. And it's not surprising that there's a lot of frictions. What the Fed is basically saying is we, we accept the fact there's a lot of frictions right now that are affecting inflation and affecting the labor market. But we think over time those frictions will subside. Spreads continue to be narrow. Yields continue to be fairly low. The equities market seems to only know how to travel in one direction. <laughs> I'm wondering when it comes to the actual tightening, how high does that peak rate need to be? Would they want to go, would they want to sort of overshoot that so that they give themselves more room, more of a buffer for potentially the next time they need to ease? Well, I don't think they would do that sort of on purpose. I think what, what's going to have to happen, though, is financial conditions are going to have to be tight, tighter at some point. And the financial conditions are going to be, have to be tighter because that's the thing that's going to slow down the economy and, keep, and prevent the economy from overheating. Tighter financial conditions, that, that implies higher short-term rates, higher bond yields, lower stock prices, some combination of the above. Uh, we can't be that confident about what will happen in terms of how, how the financial conditions will tighten, but I think we can be pretty confident the financial conditions two, three years from now will be a lot tighter than they are today. 
In the meantime, are there any risks of market instability, financial instability, if the Fed continues an ultra-accommodative policy at a time when, yes, the economy is slowing towards trend growth, but we've seen signs of strength like that ISM services uh, P, uh, PMI that came out today, a record high for the series. The economy is not weak. Inflation is high. Markets are surging. Will there be some risk on the stability side there? I think the big risk is just that the Federal Reserve will turn out to be, potentially could turn out to be an error, and then they'll have to speed up because they'll be late. And that means they'll, they would have to tighten faster and buy more. And if that happens, markets aren't going to like that. So markets won't like it, uh, but they, you think that there is a possibility. It's interesting to me, Bill, that the last time we saw the dots, they were evenly divided between a rate hike next year. Three people wanted to see two rate hikes, or expected that, I should say. The other half were not there yet, but more had moved to 2023. The movement's been toward rate hikes, uh, and Jay Powell seems to be more stuck on, mm, don't think we're, we're going to need to do it. Maybe we will, but he doesn't seem to be in that camp. Well, he's trying to draw the distinction between the taper, which has to be complete in his mind before you start to lift off, versus lift off, which doesn't have to start just because the taper is complete. Both of those things can be true at the same time. So what he's trying to say is, look, we're, we're finishing the taper, which gives us the option of raising short-term rates in the second half of the year, and we'll see how things develop, whether that's appropriate or not. I, I do think the dots are going to continue to shift to, into 2022 when we get the next uh, summary of economic projections uh, in December. And the reason for that is uh, the wage trend. Uh, the Employment Cost Index report we got uh, last week was very firm. Uh, it was the highest reading we've seen in, in, in many, many years. Uh, so it's not just that we're seeing you know, high headline inflation pressures in terms of supply chain disruptions. We're actually seeing that leak into, into the labor market.